Hello, and welcome back to the Ask the Color Expert podcast. Today's special guest is Janet Lombardi. We have reconnected after more than 16 years of meeting in Italy on a fabulous vacation. Um, We spent the day yesterday together launching the brand new Hairstylist Ultimate Mentorship, which Janet is very involved in being an amazing mentor. So I'm excited to have her here today to share with her, share, share with her, share with all of you, her amazing 50 year career in the beauty industry. I'm exhausted just saying that, Janet. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. 50 years. I remember when I turned 50 years old, what a big deal that was. And to think of being in the same career for 50 years and to see you, it's a shame that this is a podcast. Some people will watch this on YouTube and get to see your beautiful face. I was commenting when we started how amazing your skin looks and how beautiful you are. But I think what makes you even more beautiful is how much you still love what you do after 50 years. That's absolutely amazing. It is, it is, and it it is like when I first started out um, and thinking if I was gonna be a hairdresser or what was going on, I was just turning 18 years old. I was on my way to college and, um, and I went in to pick up my mom at the beauty school where she was getting her hair done. And I sat there and I watched these girls working and doing hair. And I thought, geez, I can do, I can do that. I can, in fact, I might be able to even do that better. (laughs) And so I walked in the back room and I signed up and then I had to go home and tell my mom and dad that I wasn't going to college, that I was Mm. going to become a hairdresser. And of course, back then it was kind of a taboo. If you were a high school dropout, you became a hairdresser. And so they said, if you want to do that, you pay for it yourself. And I said, okay. So I signed up for beauty school. I went Monday through Friday. I worked nights at a, um, uh, at a theater selling tickets. And I also worked weekends at a, um, at a restaurant. So I put myself through beauty school and I tell you, it was best choice ever made. And who would have, whoever finds their career or their love at 17 or 18 years old, it, it doesn't happen very often. So I'm very grateful and I don't ever take it for granted because I have enjoyed it and still enjoy it. Well, I think what, what I hear in that is that you immediately were intrigued by it. You were interested and you fought for it. And so many people who don't make it in our industry, it was a last choice. Oh, I, I don't know what else I want to do. I don't want to go to college. You know, for, for me, I knew from fifth grade that this was what I wanted to do. And I'm so blessed that my parents were so supportive of it. They never, and it was definitely a little bit easier for me than it was for you. I get that. I mean, back in the day, it was like, you told them you were going to be a prostitute. You know, it was, <laughs> it was horrifying to parents when you went to beauty school. My mom, I think was so, she was, so excited to get back out and work when us kids were a little bit older and women during her time, that was like, they felt sorry for you when you had to get a job, when you couldn't just stay at home and enjoy your children. She couldn't wait to get back out and work. So for her, I could have gone to college free. So I'm sure that bothered her. She worked at the college and my sister graduated, got a full scholarship to another school, didn't use the free tuition. My brother went for a semester, totally you know, had way too much fun, didn't take it seriously and dropped out. And then here's me, number three, she kept staying thinking, I want one of my kids to get this free tuition. (laughs) I'm like, mom, I want to go to beauty school. And she said, you know what? That's awesome. Go to beauty school. And then if you decide you still want college, you'll be able to support yourself cutting hair during college for pizza money and, you know, pocket money while you're in college. Like she just was like, whatever makes you happy. So Um, I'm so blessed. And and I was like that with my kids, you know, be, do whatever you want, because when, when other people, when we get the noise, you can't fight that passion. You paid for it yourself at 18 years old, you worked two jobs and here you are 50 years later, still fighting the fight, still showing up and still smiling about it. So passion and purpose trumps all practicality and all the roles go right out the window. So I love that you fought for that. Now, I know you've done multiple salons. We talked um, during the mentorship launch that you had 52 employees at one time. I started sweating on the other side of the camera when you said that. I was like, oh my, I think my cap was 
20 at one time in a 1200 square foot building. And it was beyond stressful. Talk to me about how you, you got through that and are still smiling and still beautiful. (laughs) You know, the best thing about the whole 45 years of owning Share Productions um, is that I still have these relationships with a lot of my employees. And there isn't anything better that has ever come to me through an email or a text that said, or, you know, oh, I found you on Facebook. Um, I was so-and-so and I worked for you. And I have to tell you, if it wasn't for you and what you taught me, I would never have been able to be an owner today. And, mm. and that has meant more to me than I think anything I've ever done. Because it, when I opened up the salons, I wanted to, to educate. That was my purpose. My reason for even opening a salon was to, um, to give like I had, I had, I was lucky to have, and I found the right person and I assisted for a year and then I went behind the chair. And so my love for continuing that education and teaching newbies, because there's nothing more exciting than a newbie in our industry. Um, it's wonderful. I just love them. So I, when I started Sheer Productions, I started in a very small location. It was 850 square feet. And I had, um, I had four hairdressers, I think, plus myself. Uh, and then, and I was on a garden level and I was looking at feet for 10, for 11 years. And I thought, you know, I need to move up to the street level. <laughs> so I started looking for a spot and I found, I found a location. Um, I only wanted half of the space that was offered to me, but the, the salesperson talked me into taking the whole space. And of course I was scared to death. I had to sit in front of three men that wanted to know how I could be successful and back in the day charging $55 for a haircut and because their their wives would not spend that kind of money I said oh please <laughs> you go back and look at what your wives are spending for their hair so it took a little while to get that done in my my confidence and I went through and I started with my 20 there was 20 employees in that salon and that was downtown Denver and I was in that location or downtown for 32 years in wow. downtown Denver and then my manager uh, and my son going to Colorado University at the time uh, involved in uh, real estate and economics. And he said, hey, did you see that new place opening up in Lakewood? And it's a great spot. You should look at it. And next step was I was opening up number two. And uh, I opened that one. And that was more, a little more difficult. The, the salon downtown, I had my employees for 20, oh gosh, 22 years. And, um, and so going into a new one, gave me a whole different line on it because downtown Denver, I was on a corner that 10,000 people walked by my door every day. Um, I I was in a huge high rise. It was easy. I didn't have to do the marketing. I didn't have to do the social media stuff. It wasn't necessary. People just walked in the door. Hence the 17 lines I had mentioned in the retail conversation. But when I got out to Belmar, Lakewood, Colorado, it was a large salon full service. I had a spa um, and it was much more difficult because there wasn't the traffic and I had to learn how to do all the media. I learned how to, I had to learn how to do the marketing. Uh, that was really a trial and, and I'm still behind the chair. So it was, it was a trial, but we had, uh, the hairdressers were wonderful. I think that's, you always have that little handful that drive you crazy. And then you have the ones that are just wonderful and just, you know, stay with you. And, and I'm, I'm still working side by side, actually, in the solo that I'm in. I'm still working side by side with um, three of my old employees. So when you stepped away from salon ownership, did you have both locations still? Or did you slowly, gradually go from two to one to solo? What was the, what did that look like? Exactly. I, I uh, Downtown, um, after, to, after 22 years in that one location, they doubled my rent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried to negotiate elsewhere in downtown Denver and it just wasn't falling together. And I think you have to, as an owner or even a business person, you have to know when something's right or when feel right or not feel right, try not to make it happen. So I thought, well, you know, maybe my time is done here. And now I I go to the burbs, if you will, and just work on on Lakewood. And that salon uh, then became my focus. I just closed the doors downtown, very difficult. But the salon out here in Belmar um, went on for um, 15, 16 years. And uh, believe it or not, two, three years ago, I had an old employee that was a manager of my downtown salon call 
and said, hey, I see you're a new grandma. Are you going to continue to own your business? And I said, oh, my gosh, yes. I, you know, I'm going to continue to do hair. I love doing hair. I said, but I would probably sell the business. That's the hard part. And yeah. I said, why? I said, why? Are you interested in buying? And she said, if you're interested in selling. And wow. within six months, I had sold her the salon uh, right before COVID. So how lucky was I? Very lucky. You you have just become the number three person that I personally know that successfully sold a salon. Only three in 35 years. And I am not one of them. My, <laughs> my daughter ended up with my salon. I was like, I cannot close it. You know, the people that work there have, make great livings and they love what they do. And it's a great salon. But I was ready to go. I, I needed to get out of that cold weather and start my new life in Florida. And I was like saying to my daughter, just try it. You know, the worst that can happen is you don't like it. Now we are three years into it. She's doing a special promotion to raise money for her friend's charity. And they're doing like, you know, all these fun things and she's bringing in other businesses in the area and she's thriving. So thank uh -huh. God she's thriving. But twice I, my story is exactly like yours. Start at the, you know, less than 500 square feet everything was rocking and rolling and wonderful, decided a second location seemed like a wonderful idea, had the two for one year, you made it a lot longer than me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm pulled between being a mom, being at salon number one and salon number two and being a wife. It was four things that were pulling me at all times. Me too. So that first location, I, my ego would not allow me to sell it because that was my baby. I had my business before I had my kids, before I got married. I was 22 when I opened my salon. So I was like, I don't want someone taking over that salon. That's like my identity. It's like selling my own identity, you know? And when I look back, I'm like, that was so silly. I should have just sold it to one of the employees and, and moved on. But, you know, you, you live and learn and everything's crystal clear when, when you're looking in hindsight um, and not when you're in it um, at the time. So I love that you know, you were able to sell your salon. Now you get to enjoy this new time for yourself in your career where you can really bring it back to you and the client, that one-on-one -on -one that sustained you all of these years, probably through all of the other stress. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. My clients um, have been with me through all the ups and downs and through the, like you said, being the mom. And I had many people, tell, I, not many, but I had a few people tell me in the day, well, you just can't do all that. You can't have a business and run a business and stand behind the chair and have children and be a mom and go to PTA meetings. And, and I, I was like, why? I, isn't that what we do? <laughs> isn't that what you do? I, that's, I, of course I can. And I, I think when people bring that up to me about, you can't do something. I go, well, I certainly can. And so I it makes you stronger. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the, the correct way to go about it, but, but it certainly helped, helped me. Yeah. In, in the mentorship, the beginning part of it that the mentees are having access to right now is the chapter on if I could turn back time. So mm -hmm. anyone that knows me, I've, I've been a share imitator for years. I always, anytime I see a dark wig, I throw it on and start doing my share imitation. And it's always, if I could turn back time. So I was like, that's perfect because after 35 years, I don't call it regrets. I, I call it lessons learned that I want to pass on to other people. A lot of people, when you ask them, what would you change? They say, I wouldn't change a thing because it's who I am now. That's great. But you can't tell me there's nothing you wouldn't share with a younger stylist for them to prevent the angst and stress and all of the things that we went through that was unnecessary. Um, and and the, the core one, I just, I got emotional today with Valentine's Day. I posted a picture of my kids in these little Cupid, they had wings and little Cupid arrow for Valentine's Day and they were babies. And I look at that photo now and I remember how grumpy and miserable I was getting that photo taken because <laughs> one's puking their lunch up on the photographer. You know what I mean? You remember what those photos were like. And then you brought them home and the husband was like, oh, cute. Like did not have any grasp at what it took to get that finished picture. But what came up for me today is everything that I missed. I, you heard me already say that my first salon was so personal to me and it was my first baby. But I, a lot of times put my first baby before my actual babies. 
Um, you know, when, when there was a client torturing me to stay late or come in early or be squeezed in, I obliged over and over and over again. And I was the mom, you talked about PTA. I was the mom flying in like Kramer on Seinfeld with the door slamming behind me at their recitals, you know, my handbag falling off my arm, the water bottle, all the stuff, like I had to get there, but I never was there. I never was fully present because I'm thinking of what I just left behind at the salon and that I have to go back and clean up the mess that I just left because I rushed out the door to get to something. You know, every time I would say to my husband, I'll be home at seven, he'd say, I'll see you at 10. And we would joke about it and he would see me at 11. It wasn't even 10. So I had no concept of boundaries. I think because I was 22 and I didn't have them in my life period. I didn't have them with friendships, with parents, with, you know, strangers, with bosses, with anyone. I didn't know what a boundary was. I was just one of those two nice people. And I see it now, like what you and I are going to be doing in this mentorship, we're going to be seeing people defending their things that they're doing that they don't realize are creating a life that should not be the way that it is. And all of the stress and anxiety of not delivering and having to say no, no is a complete sentence. It's two letters. It's not that hard, but I didn't learn no until I was 50. That's very true. That's very true. And, you know, I think that we have to, what we, like what you were just saying about what we all went through in, in our young, younger days of our career, um, there was a lot of, there's a lot about it that I look back and I go, as you, did I, did, regretfully, did I not spend enough time with my daughter, my son, my son is, they're nine years apart. So my son was gone by the time my daughter got to the age of junior high and high school. But, you know, to this day, and I'm, and look at your daughter, God bless her. She's, she's such an incredible woman. Um, but my children today tell me, you know, mom, you, I want to thank you for all of the tenacity, the, um, um, the drive, the love of doing something that you love um, and, and going with that rather than, you know, that they, one has his own business and he's just thriving. My daughter works for Paramount in LA and, um, and they both are doing what they love. And so if, if nothing else, Elaine, we taught our kids to love what you do. And I think that's the most important thing that I'm hoping to share as I go forward in the last few years of my career now is to pushing that love out there. And, and you, yes, you do say no. And there's a lot of those young folks today and my, daughter children being that age the same they do make it about themselves which is good they do have a good focus like we didn't we didn't mm -hmm. say no we stayed that extra hour we didn't oh the 10 o'clock time many times um how many times i missed dinner so at least today they do have that but i think they also have to understand how to let all the other stuff in as well the education the learning I agree. And and my kids say the same thing as well. They're like, we never felt slighted. We, we went on amazing vacations. I always made sure that when it came to gift giving, that I gave time and experience. I didn't get into all the toys with the 52,000 pieces that were going to be lost the day after Christmas. It was, we're going to the Poconos and we're going to go sledding and skiing and you know, have fun and go to the islands in the winter. And I would take them out of school. Actually, my daughter, you and I met on that Italy trip the following year. Um, I went back and took my daughter because we had so much fun on that trip. I said, oh my gosh, I have to experience this with both of my kids. Unfortunately, they stopped doing it in time for my son to go. But, you know, they both say, you taught us how to be, you know, independent and entrepreneur, they both majored in entrepreneurship in college. And of course I'm oh. like, do I really have to pay 200 grand for them to tell you, you can open your own business. I can tell you, you can open your own business. Can <laughs> I give you the 200 grand to, to help you start your business? I'd rather pay you than the university, but they both do say that they love that. I am so driven and love, love, love what I do. My daughter's like, I just don't get how I didn't inherit any of your energy. She's like, you just don't stop. Like she, she wants to work for a couple hours and then just take a little break, take a walk on the beach. Like she's <laughs> very well balanced in self-care and work ethic ethic. She has a good balance. I don't have that. I'm like 99% here and 1% here. I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress, but 
but I, I don't have any re regrets as far as the work goes. Um, I regret that it affected th those around me that I didn't get mm -hmm. to spend as much time on the little things, going to the little bouncy birthday parties and that kind of stuff. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm happy that somebody else is taking her. <laughs> <laughs> but but what I didn't add is that my husband was there. It wasn't like a parent was not there. He was in that role. Um, so now now I get sad when something big comes up and they go right to him. I'm like, hey, over here, what about me? Why'd you text dad and not me? But it's like whatever dynamic is set up is is that's the way that it was. You know, if they fell, it was like they went to him. If he was the Band-Aid guy, I was like, ah, you're all right. Dust it off. Keep going. <laughs> You know, we are women with the um, with the positive attitude. We find the positive out of everything, and that's that's what makes every the world go round is finding that positive. There's a good, exactly. there's good thing everywhere. Yeah, I think it's time. I need to try to fit more of a non hair business hobby, and I started taking tap lessons recently, and that's a lot of fun. But that's only Tuesday morning, so I'm like, I need to get some more hobbies. Janet and I were chatting before we pushed record. Um, about some art pieces and how we would love to paint our own abstract art canvases. So I think I think we need to have a girls a girls weekend where we all paint canvases and and let some of that creative energy out in another um, genre other than hair. I think it would be interesting because have you ever painted before? I did do a watercolor at a, a destination spa and I was terrible at it. I think I kept taking how I mix hair color and, and knowing that hair color and paint is different, even knowing that when I went to mix two colors together, the instructor kept correcting me. And I was like, I thought I was going to be the best one of this because I color <laughs> hair, but it really is that much different. I have painted. I have, I think it's a great, uh, in fact, I did artwork um, throughout my high school years. And in fact, that's what I was going to college to do. I was going to be, I wanted to be a commercial artist. Um, and, and, um, so I, I've always loved, you know, doing things with my hands when drawing and painting and, and all sorts of things like that. And, you know, bringing that, that up, if I was to do anything different, there's two things that if I would have at the beginning of my 50 year journey, the, the one thing that I think I would have done different was to, um, to take a business course. I, there weren't there weren't that many business courses out there and when I used to go to hair shows they would offer the business coaching but it was always for the large salons and I'd yeah. go wait I only have four people how does that how am I going to so it was really hard for me but I kept going kept going and I kept thinking somebody's going to pop up with how to have you know how can you relate so that's when I had mentioned about my mentors yesterday I had a couple of mentors that were business people and I just um I started I mean, I could, I could learn so much technical and, and it was great to learn. And, and that was the fun part of it. That was the fun part. But the business part, I really needed coaching and I needed mentoring because I wasn't getting it in our industry, which is so much different today. It's wonderful today, what we, what we tip of our fingers, what we can reach out for. So that the, the education of, of, of teaching myself about business, I think that I would have, I think I would have done much better maybe quicker, I mean, who knows? I think I would have anything to do over, I would have done business courses at the beginning of when I opened my salon. Um, I really relied on my CPA, I relied on my mentors, I relied on my attorney, um, and, then, and then that was it. I mean, I, but it's the same thing. And I think if people today can understand whether you're independent behind a chair by yourself or you're in leading 52 hairdressers, um, the education or the, the, um, the business piece is very important and it should come, um, almost as, as important as your technical piece. And that's why I think it's, um, it's so, it's so important to have that. And I'm glad that we are out there today and, and having the business opportunities. Now today, I don't do all the technical classes, although I watch them on YouTube every now and again, but I still educate myself in business. It's still part of me that um, now I want to educate myself more, put it on paper or like this platform here, uh, or with the mentors and, and, and help newbies or even new, new, new salon owners. I'd love to get in the room with the new salon owners and, and let them pick my brain and let me ask them bunches of questions because now I wish I knew now <laughs> what I, or knew then what I know now would have helped me, oh, surpassed probably what I already had done. 
I agree a hundred percent. And that is, you know, a big piece of what's missing. And that's why I'm so excited. I, I really had this on my heart for a really long time and I couldn't figure out the logistics of the money part. It's always, it always comes back to money contracts, the officialness of things. And that kept stalling the project because I'm like, how can I afford to pay the mentors? How can I afford to pay for all the back end things? So I reached out to an organization called SCORE that I had never heard of, and SCORE is retired businessmen. So you and I are at the point in our beauty career where we can mentor and coach other people. These businessmen still love the energy of talking about business, but they're all retired. So it's a free resource. So when I reached out to them about the mentorship, it's interesting to see. I know you had shared yesterday that men that you cut their hair that were businessmen helped you a lot, but there is this disconnect when it comes to the beauty industry that they don't quite get us. They don't quite understand our industry. So they can give us enough to, to get us started and further than we can go on our own. But what I found with, I worked with two different mentors in SCORE creating the mentorship. And I was like, they just don't get our bit. Like I had to take what they said and then tweak it for the beauty industry because it's just, it's so unique. And that's what I love about it. That's what I know you love about it. That's why we're both still here at 35 and 50 years. So I'm excited. Janet, to have you as part of the mentorship. So if you're listening to this podcast and you have no idea what we're talking about, it's called the Hairstylist Ultimate Mentorship. You can join by going to www.expertcolorsolutions.com slash login. I'm sorry, not login, slash mentor to join. Um, so join, it's free. Janet is just one of, I think we're over 20 now mentors and every single mentor brings their special sauce into it. We have one that specializes in finance, one that specializes in dry cutting, curly cutting, uh, razor cutting. I'm doing color. There's other colors doing color. So it's it's the full package of everything that Janet and I both wish that we had when we were starting out. So Janet, tell people how they can reach you personally if they want to reach out for coaching or just to say hello and, and meet you. How can they reach you? Um, I have my email is Janet at Sheer, S-H-E-A-R, productions.com. And that's my email. Um, and then my, um, um, I'm at Sheer Production Salon and on Insta. And then I am, uh, my phone number, I, uh, my salon number is 303-900-0181. And I would love to chat with anybody or visit or share. That's so generous. You're giving out your number. You may be getting a date out of this when they see you on the, mm -hmm. on the YouTube mm -hmm. version. Well, you know, <laughs> new, newly single and, um, and just turned 70. That's amazing. <laughs> this is the, this is going to be the best chapter of your life. I'm, I'm sure. feeling it. It feels so good. And you came into, and this whole opportunity came in at the right time. And, you know, that's, and that's another thing that you have to be, I think, um, as you go through our industry and in your life and any kind of career, you need to kind of be ready for whatever does happen. If it's not, and if you're not ready, it's okay to say, I'm not ready. I can't do this right now. I'm going to stay focused over here or, or do the self work that you need to do. And, and you got to find what's right for you. And then, then when it comes to you, then you'll go, aha, it's here. Absolutely. Very well said. Thank you for your time, Janet. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And for everyone listening, we will see you on the next one. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Elaine.